We are still following this morning the big news that federal officials are calling for a pause of the Johnson Johnson vaccine after six people developed a rare disorder involving blood clots. Those issues coming within two weeks of their vaccination. It's good to have a doctor on call, Dr. Oz. He's joining us this morning with more on this. And so how concerned do we need to be? Well, it's disappointing. Uh, it certainly is going to bring some uncertainty into people's minds, but I want to reassure folks that this is a one in a million incidents so far. We're not sure if these blood clots uh, are in complications related to those clots or related to this vaccine or not, uh, but it does show the system's working. The CDC and the FDA picked up a very small signal, again, one in a million. Now they're going to figure out, are there more people out there that haven't been picked up, or is there any kind of a linkage between the vaccine and these complications? Now, the vast majority of people in America have not gotten the j, &J vaccine. A hundred million people have gotten Moderna's and Pfizer vaccines, which are mRNA technology, very different from what the J&J &J vaccine uses, which is an adenovirus, a weakened virus. But it does raise some concerns that maybe there's an approach problem here because AstraZeneca and J&J &J both use the same technique. It's an age-old technique that's been thought to be pretty safe. Again, there may be no correlation at all, but it's better to be safe than sorry, so they're pausing. So all the issues have been with women. Um, it is scary when people hear that one person died, one person is very sick in the hospital. If you've just had the Johnson Johnson vaccine, what should you do? What should you be looking for? Well, the theoretical problem is that you're making antibodies against your own platelets. So by mistake, your body's immune system is attacking the wrong culprit, not COVID-19, but the sticky cells in your blood, and that might lead to blood clots. So any symptoms of, of that, which includes severe headaches, belly pain, leg pain, any shortness of breath, if you got that within two to three weeks of getting a vaccine, you want to contact your health care provider. There's things that I believe we can do um, that might be beneficial. We're still figuring that out as well, but there's no point waiting at home. We also want to know, is this more common than we're identifying. Maybe there are subtle symptoms in folks. Again, do men get it as well? We don't know. The older people get it. Doesn't seem to be the case with AstraZeneca, but again, this may not be the same thing. So this is a, a pause going on at all the federal sites, right? The FDA and the CDC suggesting that states should follow the same, but I guess they don't have to. So if you have an appointment for a J&J &J vaccine at a state site and you go and they're still administering, would you take it? I would not, but I suspect that's not going to be a real problem. Uh, I, you know, I was just talking to Chicago. They just, as I was speaking to them, I got word they're not going to be administering it. Most states aren't going to bother going against what the CDC and FDA is recommending. Why would they? You get world experts saying, just give us a week or two to figure out what's going down. Meanwhile, you have actually, you have other vaccines, right? You have Jane, uh, the sorry, Moderna and Pfizer. Use the ones that, that 100 million Americans have already gotten. That way there's confidence. The only really dangerous uh, problem here is if America loses confidence in the vaccine vaccination program. Otherwise, we've got other vaccines coming down the pike, and we have enough of the ones we've already been making. So we just want people to remain confident in a process that has worked incredibly well for a large number of people. Admittedly, that's going to be hard to do, though, and we're also seeing a surge in cases at the same time. So how do people find reassurance in this whole process? I mean, even two weeks from now, if the FDA goes, okay, no, 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 we're all good, you can get it again, I'm not sure people are going to choose J&J. Well, they might not, but I'll give you one stat that keeps getting ignored that to me is the most reassuring. As cases increase, which they are in 30 states out of the 50, deaths are dropping, double digits. So why is that? I would argue, don't know for sure, but one of the reasons is the most vulnerable members of our population have gotten vaccinated. And so we're having less people who are vulnerable getting COVID-19. So that, that's a good news uh, indicator that vaccination is working. And again, you've got two vaccines with an incredibly safe track record, both made with new technology unrelated to what's going on with J&J. &J. So if you never get a J&J &J vaccine, it will slow us down a little bit, but not meaningfully. The 90% plus of all the vaccinations have been the other types. Dr. Oz, as always, we appreciate you sorting it out and uh, calming our fears. Thank you.